Hi, I'm so excited. I'm standing in front of one of the schools that has implemented my sensory awareness program. I'm basically calling it my sensory awareness program now. Uh, sensory awareness for student achievement so that we add the sensory piece back into education and it's happening at this school and many other schools but I'm, I had an opportunity to be here um, just a few months ago and saw how um, sensory awareness is being implemented into everyday curriculum here, um, everyday pedagogy. Uh, they just made my work come alive and, and uh, you'll hear from the principal and the teachers here about how it is that they uh, began doing my work. So thanks for getting the video, enjoy it, uh, keep doing the phenomenal work that you're doing and uh, I'll see you again. My name is David Chisholm and I'm principal of Verdun Elementary School. About four years ago I saw Dr. Melrose at a, at a workshop and uh, the research that she presented and the workshop that she did really, really spoke to me. So uh, when I got here uh, I was very, very happy to know that some of the staff members were quite familiar with, uh, with, uh, with Reggie's material and uh, one of them was really, really uh, very enthusiastic about it and that was Sean Sullivan. So Sean and I got along great from the get-go uh, and we decided over the course of time to try and do as much as we could to try and make this place uh, work. My name is Sean Sullivan. I work at Verdun Elementary School. I support students socially and emotionally with their social and emotional needs in this school. I use a lot of Reggie's philosophy and, um, and her activities with the students. <laughs> We also work with, a, with the vocabulary of sensation. Uh, helping the students understand, you know, what the trajectory is, you know. She has heartbroken as number 10 and she has awesome at zero and great okay and, and how the progression occurs and where you are and what happens when you use some of the strategies or resources to to help um, help yourself emotionally self regulate. Yes. Yeah. And what's exciting about this is how differentiated it is, right? When you're living a life of trauma, it's a lot of zero ten and there's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. So using your resources to soothe you and to feel your feet on the ground and be more calm, you're then able in that state to start noticing oh, that there are all these fine differences between a zero and a ten. There is a one and a two and a three and you can start to feel those gradients a lot easier when you are being soothed, right? You have to be soothed first and then in that state everything opens up and you can start to notice, to notice all the different gradients of emotions and emotional regulation in their body. We work with uh, developing an awareness of what our bodily sensations are like what it feels like to be stressed or what it feels like to be tense. What does it feel like to be relaxed, feel safe and happy and to tune into our bodies at that time too, to know the difference. And then to take that a step further and, and teaching them that they have control over, over what they're experiencing in their body. I want you to notice how they're really getting this concept of containment. She's really working with them on having a bubble, having a having boundaries around them and something to protect them. So this idea that they're learning that they can be protected just within their own space. They can start to use boundaries and feel a visualized and imagined and embodied sense of these are my boundaries, this is my container, I'm in my bubble, you can't get in, right? There's this, I can see that they're doing this really embodied work around, around this. 
when I see students in small groups, we also um, we also work with a with the vocabulary of sensation. The students uh, have the opportunity to draw their bodies life size on big pieces of paper. And, and if you notice the micro, like you see that they feel frozen in the head and soft in the maybe the throat. Yeah, I think that's his neck. That's what he was talking yeah. about. And it's interesting how we need that so big. Oh, his throat like so he big. Exaggerated that. Yes. Yeah. yes. And the heat inside the center of his chest and racing in his hands. You see how those arms and hands feel like they're racing? Yeah. That's the impulsive energy that wants to do something, that wants to protect itself, yeah. right? It's that racing, driving energy, that fight energy yeah. from the fight flight. And they feel it. That's they it. And you see it in the extremities too, right? like in his legs and his feet. Electric. Yeah. The legs being electric. Yeah. And tension in the feet like that. And look at those bolts, right? And these bolts of electricity in his legs and the jumping. And so it's funny when you see such incredible detail across these bodies, they feel cold, they feel butterflies, they feel bubbly, they feel strong, they feel pulsing, right? Icky and hyper and heavy and warm. They've got all the words. So, you know, when I try to introduce this work to teachers and they think, gosh, what language is this? And I yeah. say, trust me, they speak it. Yeah. Yeah. They're feeling all of that inside their body. Yeah. And so we've got to get out of this mm -hmm. and meet them where Although they're at. It, it did take, like, I mean, it takes a lot of time to get there. Okay. And a lot of playing yeah. with those words. Like yes. here, there's a body with the vocabulary list right next to it. Oh, good. And we play with that. You good. know, like we play charades with this. So and this we, is um, from the book, too. Yeah. So here's her body. And this says, the feeling I had in my body. And there's the feeling. That's what she's feeling inside her body. And this idea here that they're learning how to breathe in a different way. You know, I'm good enough. You care for me now. I'm sorry and it's okay. I am good enough. 